I will, I will start, start switching to English. Yeah, and once you notify me, then you press the recording, I will start. Jenia, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. I uh, pressed press the record two, two minutes ago. Okay, okay, fine. Thank you. Um, so, hi everyone, my name is Xenia. And um, I was honored to attend Google I.O. conference this year, and uh, actually this is my fifth uh, Google I.O. conference, so uh, something changes, uh, some things became better, and today uh, I'm going to uh, provide key up updates with you. And uh, in general, Google I.O. conference is a very overwhelming experience, because uh, the conference are three days, and uh, includes, uh, except of tech talks, a lot of uh, uh, different sandboxes, code labs, uh, office hours where you can talk with Googlers, uh, request some help for your app, uh, make app review and ethical. And uh, yeah, so in general, uh, Google IO is an incredible place for networking to find in. Uh, colleagues that are doing the same to find an inventor and so and yeah of course uh, uh, attending technical talks technical demos and bringing him the best experience uh, back into your country into your company so um, Google IO um, in general are uh, about uh, providing updates on uh, Google products and services, uh, such as Google Assistant, uh, Google Apps like uh, Maps or Photos, Augmented Reality, and of course, lots of Android. Uh, the conference was, was opened by uh, Sia Sundar Pichai with a uh, cheesy comment. Yeah, uh, you know, the cheeseburger emoji gave uh, Google grief last year, so they decided to update the emojis, and not only cheeseburger one, but uh, yeah, of course, uh, the beer one and, and others. So it was uh, a small joke in the beginning. But anyway, so um, I guess it showed that Google cares about things that matter to users, that matter for developers, for community. And uh, yeah, so that was the point. And um, after this, uh, Sundar switched to uh, Google AI, and uh, almost all of the new features are enriched with the artificial intelligence. From developers to end users, everyone will be able to use the power of AI. Um, yeah, Sundar Pichai also said that Google AI can offer new insights to transform the medical world, such as prediction of cardiovascular risk or predicting chance of readmission. Yeah, and also they uh, showcased how AI can be used to improve accessibility. Uh, so, for example, they added Morse code to the Google Keyboard on the left picture, and uh, this uh, Morse uh, code is added as a new language, so uh, helping those people which require uh, to use accessibility and require additional languages to communicate. Gmail uh, has been also redesigned with AI-based feature called Smart Compose, which uses machine learning to start suggesting phrases and uh, keep after completing. Uh, Smart Compose is now part of the Gmail for consumers, and yeah, uh, it soon will be available on G Suite for G Suite customers, uh, and will come in, in next couple of months. So yeah, you can see uh, AI is everywhere, and uh, it will add more, I mean, it will automate more things in your daily life. So let's see how it will work in particular in Russian and Ukrainian. Uh, this definitely should be yeah, tricky. <laughs> um, the next update was uh, AI powered Google Photos, which can uh, suggest your actions. And with uh, suggested actions feature, Google Photos uh, can understand the content, uh, can uh, suggest your actions like sharing with friend, uh, can uh, recognize uh, the key uh, 
the gay person okay uh, thing in uh, in your photo and uh, for example colorize a girl's hair photo or uh, uh, provide a gray hair background as in the right side yeah and also uh, uh, suggested actions will add some uh, uh, common actions like fix crop rotate uh, or adjust the document so yeah that will be uh, added as suggestions and you don't need to uh, actually do it manually you can just take the suggestion yeah and of course uh, as a previous two years uh, Google contributes a lot into the Google Assistant uh, they want to uh, uh, have Google Assistant natural and comfortable to talk with and uh, soon Google Assistant will get six new voices uh, including singer John Legend uh, yeah it sounds uh, much more natural like a human and uh, so during the keynote they uh, showed how they recorded uh, all the phrases all the scenes needed for Google for adding uh, John Legend voice uh, to the Google Assistant yeah it was uh, it was interesting so um, after this um, Scott Hoffman uh, came on stage to discuss Assistant uh, K updates yeah, and mentioned that Assistant is, uh, is already uh, been running on 500 million of devices and uh, soon it will be uh, available in certain languages and around 80 countries. Uh, yeah, so uh, for uh, Russian uh, language support they are planning to, uh, to, to uh, have it available on Google Assistant in fall this year, but anyway, um, in Dialogflow platform, you can you can try uh, support of Russian language on Simulator, and uh, you can uh, port your actions your actions on Google to the Russian language, and at least uh, be prepared until uh, until the release of uh, on Google Home and Google other Google Assistant services. Yeah, uh, finally, they added that you don't need to say hey Google each time. So with uh, continued conversation and multiple actions, uh, Google Assistant will become much more smarter and will understand uh, multi multiple and complex questions in one sentence. Yeah, and um, the uh, Sundar also showcased the demo of Google du Duplex. It was uh, the most impressive moment from the keynote. Uh, yeah, and here I will show you how Google Assistant is going to make a phone call for hairdresser reservation. Yeah, so let's Good take a look. As I said earlier, our vision for our system is to help you get things done. It turns out a big part of getting things done is making a phone call. You may want to get an oil change schedule, maybe call a plumber in the middle of the week, or even schedule a haircut appointment. You know, we are working hard to help users through those moments. We want to connect users to businesses in a good way. Businesses actually rely a lot on this, but even in the US, 60% of small businesses don't have an online booking system set up. We think AI can help with this problem. So let's go back to this example. Let's say you want to ask Google to make you a haircut appointment on Tuesday between 10 and noon. What happens is the Google Assistant makes the call seamlessly in the background for you. So what you're gonna hear is the Google Assistant actually calling a real salon to schedule the appointment for you. Let's listen. How can I help you? Hi, I'm calling to book a woman's haircut for our client. Um, I'm looking for something on May 3rd. So I can need one second. Mm hmm Sure, what time are you looking for around? At 12 p.m. We do not have a 12 p.m. available. The closest we have to that is a 115. Do you have anything between 10 a.m. and uh, 12 p.m.? Depending on what service she would like, what service is she looking for? Just a woman's haircut for now. Okay, we have a 10 o'clock. 10 a.m. is fine. Okay, what's her first name? The first name is Lisa. 
Okay, perfect. So I will see Lisa at 10 o'clock on May 3rd. Okay, great. Thanks. Great. Have a great day. Bye. Uh, so, as you have seen, um, they put uh, all the achievements they made for AI, um, ML, uh, and other fields related to recognition of voice into the Google Duplex. So, it provides uh, so natural communications with people. And, uh, yeah, and this phone call, it's uh, almost non-recognizable as as this is a Google Assistant. So, uh, yeah, but anyway, it's just a demo, and let's see how, how this will work uh, on production. So, um, except of Google Duplex, uh, there are also some updates for Google Vision and Google Lens. Uh, Google Lens uh, will soon be integrated into the camera, and uh, you will be able to highlight the text and uh, yeah, and select it from, from your camera. And as well, uh, they introduced uh, a new feature called Style Match. So if you point a camera at the object, uh, this object recognition and machine learning, it will help you to understand your style and then buy the item online or show similar styles uh, that you may like. Google Maps are also received some updates. First one is AR-powered Google Maps. Uh, so uh, you can point the camera in the direction, and Google will pair AI with street view data and yeah, give you interactive AR experience uh, when you are on the move. And also there is uh, some uh, suggestions and hints uh, yeah, built up onto the maps, except of navigation. So. Uh, The next one update is uh, socialized Google Maps. Uh, there is a new For You tab that lets you follow specific area and see new places, uh, like trending restaurants. Uh, and uh, you can even coordinate with your friends in real time and uh, make a short list when choosing a place to do it together. During the keynote, uh, was also introduced the idea of digital well-being. Uh, Google is turning their attention to keep your digital life, uh, to keep your digital life, and finding the balance of this uh, using your phone and your family. And the main principle principles uh, are at first understanding your habits, uh, yeah, and provide controls to, uh, I mean show uh, the real usage of your phone and allow you to um, cut it in case of necessary, have some smart rules of uh, like avoiding using your phone all the time. Um, as some examples are getting a reminder on your device uh, to like to do things like a break uh, during watching YouTube videos. Uh, or uh, there is another feature called Android dashboard on the, on the left uh, on the left image, uh, and Android dashboard will give you uh, visibility how you are spending your time on the device, uh, based on, yeah, on apps, on services, uh, notifications, and many more. Yeah, and uh, of course uh, during the I/O was uh, introduced Android P K features. Android P Beta is already available and running uh, not only on Pixels devices, but um, on around nine devices. You can find uh, the full list in the official documentation. So, uh, yeah, uh, you can try to install this developer preview on real device or on emulator. Um, and uh, so, as I mentioned uh, before, Android P focuses on digital well-being. And uh, Google wants you to spend less time with your phone, so uh, it gives you information how you use your phone with the dashboard. And uh, also you can set limits of app usages, 
uh, there is a do not disturb option which silence all notifications, alerts, uh, visual interruptions, and so on. Yeah, and uh, even might uh, tra transform your screen to grayscale uh, at night, so you don't spend too much time on your phone before sleeping. And uh, also the key idea is to um, bring in a lot of AI features into the Android operation system. So uh, as far as Google is making transition from mobile first to AI first, uh, the, yeah, they talk about how important is uh, adding the AI to, to these key features. And uh, so first uh, ML features that are being brought into Android P are adaptive battery that uses machine learning to optimize your battery life by figuring out yeah, which apps uh, you're commonly using and also adaptive brightness that yeah, improving after brightness using machine learning and uh, this adaptive brightness are dependent both on uh, your environment and your personal preferences uh, also uh, they are going to add up actions that are predicting actions you may wish to take uh, depending on things you like and your your habits and uh, Android slices that are interactive snippets of UI and uh, you can use them and give a deeper look into your uh, favorite apps and suggested activities based on your usage history yeah and of course they announced the uh, ML kit and uh, ML kit is a new set of APIs available through Firebase and include uh, such things as image labeling, uh, text recognition, face detection, barcode scanning, uh, landmark recognition, yeah, and smart reply. And uh, MLKit is cross-platform on both Android and iOS devices, uh, operation systems, sorry, and uh, you can use this MLKit features via Firebase, so it's already ready to use. Um, also, Android P uh, brings a new navigation system for better user experience. Uh, for, for navigation, there is a small bar in the bottom uh, that allows you to switch between apps more easily. Uh, new system navigation in P will give users uh, easier access to home, overview, and assistant uh, functionality from this single button uh, on every screen. So yeah, in, in, in some way, it's uh, uh, Android P is going step uh, closer to yeah, to iPhone operation system, and I, I think for now this, uh, we have a time when both operation systems are adding features that are missing in every platform. But uh, I, I think this will bring uh, benefits for developers because uh, you will be able to provide almost the same UI and UX. Uh, for both platforms. So let's see. Uh, as for Android developer, uh, the most significant update was introducing the Android Jetpack. Android Jetpack uh, is a set of components, uh, tools, and uh, guidelines to make your uh, Android upgrade. And uh, so the components uh, bring together the existing support libraries and uh, architecture components that we have previously yeah, and uh, split them in four categories, architecture, UI, foundation and behavior. And uh, so all the Android Jetpack components are provided as unbundled libraries and uh, are not part of Android platform. So this means that you can uh, use only the libraries you need and you can adapt each components for your purposes. Uh, yeah, and unbundled Android Jetpack libraries ha have been moved to the new Android X namespace. Uh, so yeah, co consider replacing uh, your dependencies very soon uh, with new uh, support libraries, with new architecture companies uh, uh, models. So uh, Android Jetpack comes with five new components in alpha release. Uh, it's a work manager, navigation, paging, slices, yeah, and of course Android KTX, Android Kotlin extensions. So uh, let's start with uh, navigation component. Uh, navigation component 
uh, is a framework uh, for structuring your uh, app UI and uh, yeah, focus on making a single activity app the preferred architecture. So uh, there is out of the box support for fragments and uh, yeah, you will give uh, all the benefits uh, from existing architecture components, for example, life cycles and view model, uh, yeah, while navigation will handle working uh, with uh, fragments and fragment transaction from the transactions for you. Uh, yeah, so navigation component uh, allows you to declare transitions and uh, automatically be uh, built up and and down behavior, and uh, also it supports the links and the uh, links from the box, and uh, so you can connect different widgets, not only activities but also fragments um, and uh, some behavioral components like bottom navigation or navigation drawer, and uh, this navigation component is available in Android Studio uh, 3.2 Canary. And uh, all this navigation component has a uh, visual UI in Android Studio 3.2. So uh, yeah, if you're interested in and or if you have previously worked with storyboards, uh, yeah, I suggest take a look into this navigation component because uh, it will provide more more clear understanding of, uh, I mean, our flow based on the screens, uh, do go diagrams and so, and uh, yeah, so. I think this is also one of the benefits to uh, making both platforms similar and even to to make uh, making some of uh, developer tools uh, similar if they work very well for developers. Uh, also, one of the goals of Android Jetpack is uh, to take advantages of Kotlin language and uh, make you more productive and uh, optimize Jetpack and Android, uh, Android platform APIs for Kotlin usage. So uh, the purpose of Android KTX is to make yeah, Android de developer with, uh, development with Kotlin more concise. And uh, yeah, so for example, uh, you can transform code like on the left side into one live co code into the right side. And uh, so uh, the, the new features are continuously added into the models and uh, Android KTX is organized uh, as a set of different models and uh, each model contains one or more packages. So when you use the model, you should uh, include the dependency of each Android KTX artifact into your app build radio file. Yeah, so for now uh, almost or even, I guess, all, all the uh, models are in alpha, but uh, yeah, they're heavily invested in this area to make Android KTX available uh, as a release, a release uh, libraries. Um, one of the most uh, interesting in terms of uh, business orientation are Android slices and actions. We'll talk. Uh, about actions on the next slide. So slices, uh, the idea of slices is to have uh, uh, some UI templates that can display uh, dynamic and interactive content from your app that is already installed uh, on your phone. And these pieces will be available uh, via all Android and Google surfaces. So um, slices can include almost any content uh, like data, scrolling content, uh, some inline actions, uh, yeah, and of course, deep links uh, to your app, so user can click into the, for example, upcoming booking and be forwarded uh, into your app. So, uh, yeah, the slices are working uh, as uh, content URI and uh, are backwards compatible with uh, uh, Jetpack uh, uh, up to Back to API 19. So uh, yeah, I know that uh, for for most of us it's confusing because Google introduced instant apps, uh, then slices and actions, uh, but the idea is a little bit different. So slices will, um, for, for example, if user is searching something on your 
uh, app using uh, on on your uh, on device using uh, Google search or using assistant and asking for some actions. The idea is uh, like uh, show some UI pieces from existing applications that will uh, just allow the user to lead inside application and finalize the action. Uh, you don't need to, I mean, uh, upload any specific data. All, you, all that you need is uh, define the slices into your existing application. So, uh, yeah, but slices will be able to, I mean, uh, commonly to try uh, very soon. So for now, it's uh, not not available for wide usage. Yeah, and very close to slices are Android actions. Uh, actions uh, are the new way to make your app capabilities uh, and contents more accessible. So uh, yeah, to, to make sure that people uh, get content from your app in the right moment. And uh, app actions will appear to, to users uh, based on usage and relevance across uh, similarly multiple uh, surfaces. Android is one of the surfaces. Yeah, and uh, app actions uh, are related, very related to slices and acts as a deep link to your application. So uh, actually, uh, Actions are the shortcuts with some parameters, yeah, and uh, they works as a visible engine to to your application. Yeah, and uh, the similar slices of actions will be available for wide usage very soon. One of the uh, most uh, most awaited update for me is uh, introducing. Android app bundles, which are innovative distribution uh, format. Uh, so, this <clears throat> sorry, app bundles optimize uh, publishing of your application and uh, optimize the size uh, of your application uh, in 99% devices. Yeah, and there is no, almost no work for developers. So uh, in Android Studio, you'll now build uh, an app bundle containing everything that you needed uh, for any device, all the languages, uh, every device screen, every hardware architecture. And uh, then when user downloads the app, uh, Google Play uh, will dynamically uh, load only necessary pieces of uh, code and resources matching the user device. So people will see the smaller install size on Google Play Store, uh, can download app more quickly and yeah, save space on their devices. Um, Android app bundles will also, I guess, will also enable modularization. So you can deliver features uh, on demand uh, instead delivering during the install and uh, Google Play introduced new dynamic delivery. Uh, yeah, but I think th this is, can be covered in separate topic. So uh, besides of uh, Tech Talks uh, keynotes, uh, there were around 15 sandboxes uh, on the shoreline amphitheater area where uh, you're able to, um, uh, to, to, to visit sandboxes uh, with, uh, with showcasing some specific technologies like uh, web, Flutter, uh, Android, uh, but also they have uh, some hardware, uh, yeah, uh, hardware sandboxes, and uh, except of uh, Waymo, Android After, they have. So for me, uh, the most interesting was sandbox with Android things. Uh, they have uh, introduced uh, different projects built uh, up onto uh, building built on Android things. And uh, yeah, these projects provided uh, like uh, common and easy way for developments using uh, like lateral fast Android uh, uh, pattern of developing Android apps. But in the same way, they allow to uh, use specific hardware. Uh, for example, uh, first demo 
uh, was uh, to showcase how flowers can react on your actions. Uh, first, uh, on the left side, uh, you was able to move your head and camera uh, in the middle, in the center of flower was uh, recognizing your motion and uh, turning the direction of flower uh, to you. Uh, yeah, but the coolest one was the second, uh, where flowers recognize your emotion, emotions with uh, vision kit. So if you smile, the flower will, will be pink. If you are sad, uh, the flower will, will recognize your face and emotions and become blue. And uh, yeah, these vision kits are already available for, uh, I mean, to, to buy in uh, Best buy or target supermarket, so yeah, anyone can use them. And uh, together with Android Scenes, build some uh, IoT projects. Uh, the next one was handbot that uh, recognized your uh, your movements, uh, movements of your hand, and uh, you was able to play simple games with, with this uh, robot hand. Yes, but uh, this hand is also built on Android scenes, but using uh, advantages of uh, machine learning features to, I mean, predict your actions and uh, provide I mean, more uh, natural way to interact and play games with people. Yeah, the next one uh, is Drawboard. So it both has. Uh, some program part and hardware part. Hardware part was uh, <coughs> consisted from a device that allowed to take a photo, then send it to 3D printer. And uh, once it's sent, uh, they uh, process your image and uh, recognize the significant parts of your face, transform it to grayscale, and then the robot is printing, uh, printing your photo uh, in five minutes. Yeah, and the last one was with the printer, but uh, yeah. uh, one thing that it provides an integration with uh, vi visualization of of the progress of printing. Yeah, and uh, all these devices uh, was mainly aimed to showcase. Uh, Android project built with Android Scenes because uh, Google also released uh, the Android Scenes so, uh, 1.0 release. So yeah, if you're if you're interested in IoT and creating some own hardware devices, I uh, recommend you to take a look on this platform. Yeah, and also as usual, uh, every Google I/O attendee received a device. So this year uh, there was a giveaway of Google Home Mini device and Android Scenes Kit, uh, which actually include uh, almost all uh, hardware parts needed for uh, building the projects like, yeah, uh, like we just uh, reviewed, except of uh, some specific hardware like hand or uh, 3D printer. So yeah, if you have ideas, you can ping me and yeah, we can think about uh, like sharing this Android Scenes kit together. Uh, yeah, and of course, as usual, useful links to uh, to the I/O keynote and sessions. Uh, yeah, all the sessions are recorded, so if you're interested in some, uh, yeah, you can watch watch them live. And uh, also, I suggest to take a look uh, in the Google Code Labs from IO18 because they have uh, almost uh, all new features covered, uh, like using new navigation, work manager, slices, and so on. And uh, yeah, a lot of uh, demos for Google Assistant and Dialogflow. And also some links to Android uh, updates, including and check uh, new Android Studio 3.2 can release Android P features, uh, yeah, and uh, upcoming Android X uh, model that we all are going, so every Android developer uh, will going to use very soon. Um, 
thanks for watching. If you have any questions, I am ready to answer. What are Guys, the next... do you have any? Yeah, we do. Uh, what are the next updates uh, from Google? Is the most expected? Um, yeah, I think they will provide more updates related to AI, using AI in uh, everywhere. So for now, they're going to add more and more features to Android. Uh, also, they have uh, a lot of uh, features on demand that are available for use in via Firebase, uh, via TensorFlow Flight on the devices. Yeah, and I think uh, as far as they mentioned that voice is the future, they is going to, uh, I mean, next generation of uh, apps, of services, of products that will uh, automate like common things that we are doing with AI. And yeah, for now it looks very promising, uh, but I mean, mobile still will be needed uh, for, I mean, We'll, uh, as developers, we will still have uh, work for upcoming years, but uh, anyway, I consider to uh, take a look uh, at least on the Dialogflow platform and create an own uh, action on Google, which is a Google Assistant app. Uh, yeah, because uh, I definitely believe that yeah, this is uh, one of uh, pieces of the, our future. Thanks for your comment, uh, guys. Uh, do you have questions to Ksenia? Sure. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Ksenia for a great presentation. And I have a question, for example, for Android Jetpack and support library. Is it ready to use, for example, in the commercial projects, or do we have some issues with it? Have you tried, for example, uh, use it in your own project? So. Uh, I'm actually not trying any alpha releases in, into the production. Yeah, uh, so I, I have tried some demos uh, into the Android sandbox. Uh, but anyway, for, for example, navigation and uh, so support libraries are more or less the same, but uh, new components are very buggy for now. And uh, yeah, if you want to include them into production, I suggest to wait at least better for like uh, hands-on try. And only after official releases, it can be included into production project. It's yeah, the same for Canary Studio and so on. So uh, after after some pitfalls, I now only using this uh, uh, alpha preview scanner releases only on my not uh, working environment, only on some private environment, you know. Thank you. And another question is regarding what outstanding videos from the Canfres can you recommend watching? I know that there is a lot of them, but maybe a few of them are spectacular and you can definitely recommend. Uh, excuse me, could you please repeat the beginning of the question? Yes. What, for example, what are most memorable videos you can recommend watching from the Google I? So, uh, if you didn't uh, watch the keynote uh, and developer keynotes, uh, so from, from the last year we have two keynotes, you can watch for like a general overview. Uh, as for Android, the most uh, uh, interesting session was from Ritomir about, uh, I don't know uh, the exact name, but it was like uh, evolution of Android developer and advanced, uh, and, uh, so it was called advanced Android development. So uh, Rito is one of the First people who work on the Android framework uh, put all the uh, all the tips for creating like great Android app into one presentation. So yeah, you know there is a Jetpack, there is a architecture components and so so on. But uh, he put essentials that are needed for uh, every project, both uh, legacy and fresh one. Uh, so yeah, and of course. Uh, there are sessions related to uh, some parts of technologies like work manager or 
uh, architecture components. So it depends on your needs and yeah, you can uh, for yeah, select in particular uh, sessions. Uh, as for others, let me think. Um, so as for me, uh, at the conference, I mostly try to attend sandboxes, office hours to speak with uh, people that are working on products. Not not as many stations uh, as I can because they are anyway recorded. Yeah, and uh, also I suggest if you are using Kotlin, I suggest to look into the Android KTX session uh, from Jake Wharton, um, where he uh, showcased uh, usage of uh, so most of uh, Android KTX libraries. Yeah, and. Uh, there also was uh, one session about profilers. So in case if you need to, if you ha have to monitor some network operations, uh, some performance and others, uh, I suggest also take a look into, uh, it was uh, profiling in the buy-in session for Android, something like this. I, I didn't remember exact name. And, yeah. Okay, thank you, Ksenia, for your uh, all answers. Is it from my side? Okay, thank you for listening to me. And yeah, in case, in case if you have uh, some additional questions or yeah, ideas, at least for Android Sins kids, don't hesitate to ping me. Uh, yeah, and I will be glad to talk with you.